Calculus 2, video lecture number 11, and we're starting our unit on differential equations. To kick it off, this first lesson will cover modeling with differential equations. Now, differential equations is a whole branch of mathematics that you can study in great detail. We're just going to skim the surface right now. So first, what is a differential equation? Well, it's an equation that contains an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives in the same equation. And the order of the differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that occurs in the equation. A function f is called a solution of the differential equation um, as long as the equation is satisfied when f of x and its derivatives are substituted into the equation. So here we're going to look at a differential equation. It's right here. Here's the first one maybe that you've ever seen y prime plus tangent of x times y equals cosine squared x. So we see that we have a derivative, y prime, in the equation, and then we also have the function, y. And it's our job right now to verify that y equals sine of x times cosine x minus cosine x is a solution of the initial value problem given below on the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so what we need to do is show that y equals sine x cosine x minus cosine x makes this differential equation a true statement when I substitute in y and its derivative into the equation. So let's go ahead and figure out what y prime is. To get y prime, I need to use the product rule on this first term here. So we have sine x, we've got alone. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Plus, and then now I'm going to take the derivative of sine x, that's cosine x, and then leave the other cosine x alone. And then derivative of negative cosine x is going to be positive sine x. So all we're left with here now is negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus sine x. So that's y prime. Now I want to show that it satisfies the equation that was given, y prime plus tangent of x times y equals cosine squared x. So to begin, I'm going to substitute in for y prime the derivative that we just got right here. So negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus sine x. And then I have plus tangent of x times, now I need y, the original function, which is right here. That was my original y, so sine x, cosine x, minus cosine x. And I want to confirm, does this indeed equal cosine squared x? Let us see. So we have here negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus sine x. Let's distribute this tan x. Okay, and I know tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So it's going to cancel with that cosine x here. And I'm going to be left with plus sine squared x minus, and then it's just going to cancel with that cosine x over there. And I'm going to be left with sine x. So does this equal cosine squared x? Hmm. I see quite a few terms I can cancel, don't you? So sine squared x is gone. Bye-bye. Sine x is also gone. Ooh, so yes. Cosine squared x equals cosine squared x. So we verified that that particular equation is a solution for the differential equation that was given. All right, very good. Let's look at some other kinds of differential equations. Example two. So for what values of k does the function y equals cosine of kt satisfy the differential equation for y double prime equals negative 25y? So this differential equation that we're working with is different than the previous one because notice it's second order. We have a second derivative in it. 
And what we're going to do is find k, the constant in particular, that we need in order to satisfy this differential equation. Okay, well, we're working with the function y equals cosine kt. That means y prime would be negative using the chain rule, k sine kt. So y double prime, I'd multiply by k one more time and have negative k squared cosine kt. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute all of this into the differential equation that was given, right? For y double prime equals negative 25y. So 4 times y double prime is right here, negative k squared cosine kt. That needs to equal negative 25 times y, the original, which is right here, cosine kt. Okay, so to solve this equation, let's set it equal to zero. So I have negative 4k squared cosine kt plus 25 cosine kt is zero. I can factor out cosine kt from both terms. And I get negative 4k squared plus 25 is 0. So I'm going to use the zero product property now to solve. Either I get cosine of kt equals 0 or negative 4k squared plus 25 is 0. Now, if cosine of kt equals 0, that's just the trivial solution. What do we mean by that? Well, they're telling me the equation has the form y equals cosine kt. So obviously, if y is equal to 0, then 4 times y double prime would be 4 times 0, and that would equal negative 25 times 0. If your function is just 0 and you keep differentiating, you're going to get 0, and it's going to satisfy it. That's why we say it's a trivial solution. It's not interesting. It's obvious case. Function is constant. Now this one, here we go, we're going to get something interesting happening. k squared would equal 25 over 4, which means for k, we get either plus or minus 5 halves. Okay, very good. So first part's done. Part B says, for those values of k, Verify that every member of the family of functions y equals a sine kt plus b cosine kt is also a solution. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So remember, we're just going to go back to the original differential equation, which says that 4y double prime has to equal negative 25y. So if this is what y is equal to, let's see what y double prime would be, and then verify that it's going to satisfy it. So y prime, I'm going to differentiate now. So derivative of a sine kt, I'm going to have to multiply by k, right, because of the chain rule. So I'm going to have k times a cosine kt, and then derivative of the next term is going to be negative k times b sine kt. Okay. One more round. Remember, we need y double prime for this equation. So now this is going to be another chain rule. Another k is going to get multiplied out. So negative k squared a sine kt. And this is going to stay negative minus k squared b cosine kt. Okay, so now let's check if this satisfies the differential equation. So 4 times... Here's y double prime. Let's plug it in here. Negative k squared a sine kt minus k squared b cosine kt. Does that equal negative 25 times y, y being the original guy right here, a sine kt plus b cosine kt. Hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do to clean up. Ooh, I can factor out a negative k squared. Do you see that? Okay, so we've got negative 4k squared times a sine kt plus b cosine kt. And I want to know, does that equal negative 25 
times a sine kt plus b cosine kt. Well, what did we get for k? Remember, we got for k previously that it was equal to plus or minus 5 halves, which means that k squared was equal to positive 25 over 4. So if I substitute that in for the k squared here on the left, I'd have negative 4 times 25 over 4 times a sine kt plus b cosine kt. And I can see, yep, that equals negative 25 times a sine kt plus b cosine kt, right? Depending on if you choose the positive or negative, these will cancel out and you get the same thing on both sides. So it's verified. Make sure until you verify at the final step, you're putting that question mark above the equal sign. You don't wanna write it like, ooh, it's already true until you've actually verified it, right? Okay, one more example. Show that every member of the family of functions y equals natural log of x plus c divided by x is a solution of the differential equation x squared y prime plus x times y equals one. Okay, so this is a first order differential equation. I just have first derivative in there. So let's go ahead, compute it, plug everything back in and verify. So y prime, we got to use the quotient rule. So we have low de denominator, d high, derivative of the top. That's 1 over x plus, c. it's just a constant, so 0, minus high d low over the denominator squared. And then this is going to clean up x times 1 over x. That's just going to give me 1. And then distribute this negative here. So minus ln of x minus c over x squared. So I'm going to substitute this in now for y prime in the differential equation. So we've got x squared times 1 minus ln of x minus c over x squared plus xy. But for y, remember I'm going to replace it with ln of x plus c over x from here. And I want to see, does that equal 1? Yeah, well this one's pretty easy, right? x squared cancels, x cancels. So I have 1 minus ln of x minus c plus ln of x plus c cancel, 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 cancel. Yep, that equals one. Okay, now notice in this differential equation we had plus c, right? We had a, a more general solution. Here they want us to find a solution of the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition y of one equals two. So basically what they want us to do now is find the particular c that yields the unique solution. So find C. That's what that's telling you to do. So you just have to go back to the um, family of functions that was given as the solution. Y equals ln of x plus C over x. And we're going to substitute in now 1 for x, 2 for y, and solve for C. All right. So 2 equals natural log of 1 plus C over 1. Well, that means 2 equals ln of 1 is 0, so c equals 2. So they want the actual solution, so put it back in. So y would equal natural log of x plus 2 over x. Okay, so when solving differential equations, you'll see if you're not given an initial condition, then a lot of the times you have a family of solutions or a family of functions that satisfy it and you'll involve some constant. However, if you're given an initial condition, then you can solve for the particular solution. Part C, they're just switching up the initial condition on this. So find a solution of the differential equation that satisfies now y of two is one. So instead we're gonna plug in two for x, one for y. Okay, so one equals ln of two plus c over two. 
and then 2 equals ln of 2 plus c. So just leave it. c is 2 minus ln of 2. Okay, and then plug that all back in. So y equals natural log of x plus c, so plus 2 minus ln of 2 over x. And we are done. Okay. We've got to box it nicely. We have to have some pride about our work. Okay. So that concludes this first lesson. It was just to get you familiar with what a differential equation is. I'm sure you're curious, how do we solve these? Because every example that we just examined together, the solution was given and we just had to verify it. So that's what we're going to cover in the next couple lessons, different kinds of differential equations and how to solve each one of them. And then obviously you can study differential equations in a lot more detail. There's so many different types and they get a lot more interesting but we're just gonna scratch the surface and have a little bit of fun. So stay tuned, we're gonna look at how to solve separable differential equations next.